brought about by the products they're selling and the people they meet. Many, including school leavers, are attracted to curry. The merchandise is interesting, and there's such a wide range of it too. Another advantage in working for curries is that the firm is rapidly expanding, and that's a healthy out. There are now over 350 branches, stretching from Aberdeen to the Isle of Wight and from Penzance to Ramsey. An expanding company of this size offers exceptionally good opportunities for promotion. The assistants of today can become the branch managers of tomorrow. And after that, well, just remember that nearly all the executive staff of Curry's are promoted from within the company. This is not wishful thinking on this young chap's part. It does happen to the right people. And talking to the right people, if you are keen to get on intelligent, industrious, and willing to learn, then here are some useful ideas on just how you can tackle your job as a sales assistant in the Curry's organization. Indeed, how you can climb that Curry's promotion manner. Most people know Curry's as radio, electrical and cycle people with lots of shots. Past their local branch in the high street hundreds of times. But what do people think of Curry's? When they do, it's not the shop they have in mind. It's the man behind the counter, the sales assistant. It's you. Good morning, Harry. Because you are the person they meet when they come into the shop. So, you are Curry. Now, there are five main requirements which make up the successful sales assistant. Let's look at each requirement in turn. This sales assistant here, Rage by name, starts us off. Now, suppose that a customer walked into the shop to see you looking like this. She's not going to think very much of Curry, is she? Because to her, you are Curry. She'd expect you to look like this. Like Rage, in fact. Smartness doesn't have to include a several row suit. Not being conceited, either. Smartness comes from being both tidy and clean. So, on the list of the five main requirements of a successful sales assistant, the first is good appearance. But it's not only your appearance which makes the first impression on the customer. How about your approach? This picture speaks for itself. Complete lack of interest in serving the customer. And what an interesting perspective sale, too. I can't blame you for looking fed up, madam. Mm -hmm. But would you mind going back for a moment? Now, let's go through this again. But this time, with young George around. Ah, that's better. You see, this chap knows how customers should be treated. And he didn't waste any time when the customer entered the shop. Don't wait for them to approach you. You get to them first, to stimulate the interest which brought them in in the first place. So, the second requirement on our list of success is a pleasing personality and a correct approach. Following on from this, the customer expects you to have a good knowledge of the merchandise you sell. Certainly, she'll expect you to be able to demonstrate appliances and to know the pros and cons of one type against another. You must talk intelligently about them and have all the answers at your fingertips. Take Jimmy here. How successful would he be in selling this recorder if he couldn't discuss, say, four-track recording? Or how far would Red get in selling this bridge if he didn't know its principal features? And another thing. Remember that the customer's time is just as valuable as yours. He doesn't want to hang about half the day waiting for you, perhaps, to sort out the price. Or, worse still, be messing around with a simple matter like fitting a plug. But it's not only the expensive items that the sales assistant should be clued up about. He should have just as much know-how about all the merchandise, no matter what the size. The customer who wants to know why his dynamo headlamp bulb is always blowing. The customer who wants to know why her new gas lighter won't work in spite of that new battery she bought last week. What's the capacity of this new automatic washing machine? Why is this set more expensive than that one? When must I be fast my fridge, which is the quickest electric shaver? How high should my saddle be? Why must I have 625 lines? Questions. Questions. All requiring answers 
answers, answers. And so often, you'll be asked to advise on the choice of an article for some special need. Anyway, all this adds up to the third requirement of the successful sales assistant. Knowledge of merchandise. New types of merchandise are always on their way to your branch. Depots and warehouses spread over the country. You must get to know their selling features and learn to demonstrate them effectively. So get to know as much as you can, as quickly as you can. So, now you know all about the product and what makes it tick. And you can't wait to tell the customer. So, here goes. Phew! Now she knows all about it. Enough to make one herself, no doubt. Ah, but you see, it's not enough just to sell it. You must also sell it. So, requirement number four that we're now going to discuss is salesmanship. When you first start working at the Curry's, you'll not be expected to deal with the bigger items. But soon, your selling ability and knowledge of merchandise will improve, especially if you listen to more experienced salesmen, like the branch manager. Salesmanship is a quality developed through experience. It's not taught in six easy lessons. However, in your eagerness to become a successful sales assistant, and thereby to further your career, there are some definite points to watch, and some pitfalls to avoid. Like, for example, arguing with a customer. The old saying about the customer always being right is just as true today as it ever was. Because if you do argue, and even if you win your point, you may well lose the customer. Don't rush for the big money sale and ignore the small accessory sale at the counter. Today's customer for a small item could be back for a fridge tomorrow. In this case, though, most certainly not. At busy periods, too, don't show favoritism. Yes, she's a factory, but other customers have been waiting longer. Remember those important companion sales, as we call them. Stand to go with the eye. Or perhaps a flex support, madam. An extra reel of tape for your new tape recorder, sir. And this fellow was just bought the bike. Has he got a stand for it? I expect you can think of many others. Remember, companion sales are extra sales. Don't just be a mechanical shelf reacher to the first product the customer asks for. This isn't a self-service store. This customer wants to replace the now obsolescent AD3 battery for his set. Okay, bring him the old type, but compare it with the modern, cheaper equivalent. This is a perfect lead into the sale of a transistor-type radio. In other words, you are selling up, not just a battery, but a radio set. It sounds a tall order, but it isn't, you know, if you explain the saving in battery cost as being the deposit on a new transistor set. This is what we mean by selling up. In other words, be a salesman, not a shelf reacher. It's surprising what you can do if you try, and if you succeed in pleasing the customer, you're more likely to see him again. This is where salesmanship comes in. This is where you can earn some useful extra money every week. Because in Curry's, assistants are encouraged to sell by a system of cash bonuses for the sale of those lines called bonus lines. You won't sell a bonus line every time, of course. But there are these money spinners. Your own personal money spinners amongst most types of goods sold by your brother. Keep a close check with the manager about them, and have a go. Your selling will actually go beyond the shop. This adds variety to the work, and often a cup of tea. Your personal appearance, approach, knowledge of merchandise, and salesmanship are just as important as in the shop. In fact, even more so. Because without the shop around you, you are very definitely curried. Let's recap for a moment. One, good appearance. Two, 
Correct approach. Three, knowledge of merchandise. Four, salesmanship. And now, five, efficiency. When you've been in your job for a few weeks, you'll discover that although you're called a sales assistant, there's much more in your daily work than selling. There's the replenishment of stock, the maintenance of stock in good order. The entering of goods in the stock register. And display work both in the window and in the shop itself. Your aim is to tackle every type of job in the shop and to learn how to do all of them in a speedy and efficient manner. This isn't the civil service, but there is a certain amount of paperwork to be done. Take help from the branch manager whenever you need it in matters like making out bills or by a purchase agreement. Try to cultivate neatness and accuracy in your written work. Once you've got this paperwork buttoned up, you'll be able to explain it better to the customer. It could be HP, EIP, art exchange, rebate schemes, and other matters like TV and radio maintenance arrangements. This knowledge is a must in the efficiency of a sales assistant. Take a tip, though, from Anne, the cashier, when she gets out of her desk in all this paperwork. Call in the branch manager when things are really out of hand. Don't worry, you'll learn fast enough if you're keen and intelligent like Jimmy here. He seeks the manager's advice if there's something he doesn't understand in a head office circular. The manager can offer you good instruction on a host of matters about the running of the shop. Benefit from his experience. Listen and learn. In these ways, you'll gain requirement number five on the list of the successful sales assistants, efficiency. If you're determined to have a real go at getting on top of your job, and thereby increasing your pay packet, then remember Jimmy, Reg, and George in this building. They've shown you the right and the wrong ways to go about things. Keep them in mind when you get back to your branch. Put these basic principles into practice. You'll soon pick up the rest. And as you do, you'll become a most important member of your branch, eventually being promoted to higher positions. First sales assistant, branch manager, and even further up the Curry's promotion ladder. But you can never become the most important person as far as our organization is concerned. No, this man isn't even one of the managing directors. Our most important person is none other than our customer. It's the customer who pays your wages. It's the customer who will help you get off. It's giving 100% efficient service to the customer that will bring you promotion in your work and which will increase your personal earnings. No one else can do this. So look after your customer. All day and every day. Drop whatever job you're doing, whoever you're talking to. Yes, even the district man. Excuse me, sir? Yes, drop everything flat whenever a customer walks in the door. For now, it's cheerio from George. Cheerio. And Jimmy. Good luck. They wish you luck.